an instant in season and out of season, ain't it?
Amen. That's the key. But I'm not here next time. Just don't let me get a hit. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it's good to be back this morning. We have missed uh, everyone. We missed last Sunday, of course. And Sister Allie and I were going to go on vacation, but we got sick instead. <laughs> and uh, you know, if there was a vacation, we been sick. So uh, we're still getting over it, though. It's still a lingering cough and sinus problem. But it's good to be back. Uh, Brother Jordan, it's good to see you. Amen. I know that you'll be leaving us soon, but uh, we love Brother Jordan, and let's keep him in our prayers. Amen. Let's also be praying for uh, Chris Alby. He fell down five steps last night, and uh, I think he is still recovering. <coughs> Today is what I was told. Uh, Chris uh, texted me and said that he is sore and stiff, so he's asking us to pray for him this morning. Let's also pray for Sister Susie and, and uh, Jr. Uh, they both need prayer this morning. Well, she left me a message. She wanted to be here. Um, but some things come up, and so they're asking for prayer. Let's also continue to pray for Brother Donnie and Sister Patty. Uh, I know they have had family in this week, so I've left them alone. But let's continue to pray for them. I was looking for Sister Ashley and the boys today, but uh, let's continue to pray for Sister Linda. I know that she fell the other day. Uh, and that complicated matters a little bit, so maybe why Sister Ashley's still home with her. But let's keep her in prayer. Uh, I know that they are still trying to get better, so just pray, pray for it. It has. So let's just keep them in prayer. Amen. There's somebody I'm forgetting. Uh, man, but yes, let's keep her in prayer with the pregnancy and the baby. Let's remember that. Who else has a request? Uh, remember my mom. She didn't get the help Stephen's grandmother. Uh, she is in the nursing home starting to yesterday, isn't it? And so just pray for her. Uh, she is 92 Monday. So let's pray for her. Let's pray for her. That's a good old age. Amen. So let's remember her. Anybody else have a request? Confirmation that she is in stage four cirrhosis. So 
We just know God can heal, though. Amen. Sister Christy. Yes, let's remember Cole. Uh, he needs prayer, too. Amen. 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 Sister Alvy, three. My mom who goes all day in the Yeah, uh, Mr. Alvy's mother was in the hospital, and so she needs, she needs prayer. Amen. Brother Jordan. Brother Baxter. Wow, a lot to pray about. A lot of people are sick. Let's remember the Lumpkins. I'm not sure where they are. Let's pray for them. Would you stand with us, please, this morning? So good to be back in the house of God. Amen. I, I miss it, but Brother Babe, uh, I think they were this close to voting in his past. <laughs> Amen. No, I don't know. But uh, I wouldn't be offended because he's a good man. But uh, let's just pray for him. He got a new base for his birthday. Oh, Look at that. Matches his shirt. It is a beautiful name. Amen. It's beautiful. I just love it when God's people get blessed. Even when it's not me, I love to see God's people get blessed. Amen. Brother Bays, would you take this to the Lord this morning? Lord, in our holy name, Jesus, we thank you and praise you for all thy blessings that you have poured out upon us. We pray thy will first and foremost in the service today and in the lives of the people that are here and that have been mentioned. We pray, O oh Lord, knowing that it is not thy will that any be sick, but that all be well. And we know that it is not your will that any be lost, but all be saved. We hold up unto you these things that have been requested, Lord. Move for them, deliver for them, save them. Lord, raise them up on the strength and newness and reinvigorate them. Give them revival in their hearts and in their bodies, O oh Lord. In thy holy name, Jesus, we pray. Lord, and praise you for all thy blessings in the service today. In the glorious holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Did you have a good place to give most importantly, did you say your tail back about 10 pounds? Yeah. <laughs> I'm still working with sitting my back. I don't know how they do that. But I, when I step on it, I just subtract however many pounds I feel it's over. You know, the problem with some of the white scales, they'll go 300. After that, how's the doctor going to know you all stood weight? <laughs> You'll give that later. Maybe see. Maybe see. One glorious day.
between the church and Sister Alvin number three practicing on the drums. And I think she could probably sing with that if she wants to. Like it's in the bathroom. Playing on his own. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The classes can be dismissed. I just want to say this before the classes go, though. Uh, you know, the church was, Sister Martha reminded me, the church was able to help uh, six or seven families. I don't know if it was six or seven or eight. We were able to help um, families with Thanksgiving baskets. Sister Pam, and I was so glad about that. And uh, there was one particular family who not only needed some help with Thanksgiving, but also was in quarantine because of COVID. And the church was able to fill up their front porch uh, with groceries to help them. And uh, they were in need of a lot of things being in quarantine for almost two weeks. And uh, they were so thankful. And I just want to say what a blessing it is to be able to help those in the community those that are widows, those that are uh, fatherless, and it was a great thing to help them. Class can be dismissed, Sister Bates. Amen, kiddos. I'm sorry. Yeah. If you want to hear go, I'd like to, for them to hear what the church is doing. Amen. I know you can not say the time. I can't. I actually heard that. You heard that. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Don't forget, I will be preaching tonight. I know that it says Brother Bay's will, but I'm going to try to. Uh, so don't forget that tonight. Also, next Saturday, the trustees, we have a meeting, so don't forget that. And then on the 12th is the Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner here at the church. Uh, there will be no evening service that day. We normally like to spend and hang out and just enjoy each other's company. So come and have a good time. There's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board in the back uh, for dishes that you ladies and gentlemen uh, want to bring. Church will be providing the meat. I've left that up for the day, but he has some really good ideas, as usual. So let's just remember that. I'm just looking forward to it. Amen. Today, the lesson... Uh, Sister Martha, it's November the 28th already. Amen. We have less than a month till Christmas. It has been some years since Sister Alvy and I were able to buy gifts for little kids, although we always buy for those that she babysits for. But uh, my nieces and nephews, we went out this weekend, and I think we shopped till we dropped. And uh, we, I've just fallen in love with it. I wanted to know that they don't have a rich uncle in Kentucky, but they got one that loves them a little bit. And so uh, I went and spoiled them rotten, and um, I plan on going and doing some more. <laughs> Amen. I just enjoyed I remember when our kids were little, uh, uh, I, I remember, uh, this Christy, we couldn't afford much of anything. And uh, even at Christmas time, there were times when we needed help, and there were people that helped us. And uh, I remember there were times when we, a couple of times when it was hard putting the kids in school. Mom and Dad would uh, buy backpacks and clothes, and they would help with supplies and stuff. And uh, but now, as we're a little older, got a little bit better job, a little bit better income, we're able to do a little bit more. Sister Pam and. It's, Time to spoil some kids, except for my own. <laughs> Amen. But uh, they spoil us now. If they can't. The thing is about my kids is they take it after me. They can't wait till Christmas Day to give you what they just bought. So uh, we have been giving Christmas and even birthday gifts all week long. And uh, so I got for my birthday, they got me one of those. Uh, doorbells that I can see who's at the door. So if you show up, <laughs> and of course I always want to see you all, but if I don't want to see you, <laughs> I'm joking. But uh, we can see when the UPS man is coming and it's not somebody knocking at the door or whatever. So I do I do like that. And, uh, they've got their mom already started giving them her Christmas gifts and mine and what a treat it is. But today, let's talk about the lesson created to worship 
Amen. The lesson big idea says, I will praise the Lord in the focus verses. It's found out of Psalms 156, and it says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. <coughs> You'll notice that today's lesson is taken out of Psalms 151 through 6. And as Brother Stephen gets ready to read it for us, I want to say that the scripture starts with what? Praise ye the Lord. Oh, yeah. And it ends with, praise ye the Lord. In all things, we should praise the Lord. In good times, in bad times, in times of uncertainty, in times of uh, stress. Amen, Sister Haley, I've been praying for you. I know those attacks that you have. And the, the, the devil's just a liar. The truth ain't in it. Right. Amen. Brother Stephen, would you read that text for us? Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the Sister Bass plays that tambourine with the sound of a trumpet and psaltery and harp. Those that's the piano and the organ. Amen. We we just love to praise the Lord. Amen. And everything, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. When we come to the house of God, we're supposed to praise the Lord. That's what we're supposed to do. Amen. Sister Becca, the lesson connection and when I started to read the lesson connection, I'll have to admit I wasn't too impressed, but when you get to the very last paragraph, it's quite empowered. Okay. Let's read it
God. Amen. I, I pray that we live a life that others want to mimic. Think about that for a minute. I pray honestly that as a church, we love people uh, as a church in them, where not only do they want to come, but uh, other churches want that same love that we have in our church. You understand that, what I'm saying? Amen. Not that we want others to be jealous of what we have. I'm not saying that. But I want them to want to mimic what we have, the life that we have, the blessings that we receive. And the reason we receive those blessings is because we're willing to bless the Lord. Amen? That's right. We, we need to be proud of our faith and the God that we serve. We don't need to rub it in people's faces and we don't need them to we don't need to look down on them or judge them. Right. But we need to be proud of where we go to church. We need to be proud of the God that we serve. We need to be proud of our belief. Not pride in a, a, a prideful sense, but proud of what we believe. I thought about your when I read that, I thought about your grandma and thought about my grandma. They were both pastors. And their life that they led, they led a lot of people to Christ. And not only that, like I said before, also in their death, they touched as much people in their death as they did their life. So they left a legacy for others to be able to know who Christ was. And Amen. We talked about a weeks ago. Yes, we did. We talked about leaving a legacy. And uh, what are we saying to those that are watching our life? What What does our life say about? Uh, uh, what we believe. Does our life prove what we believe? That's, that's, well, that's deep, isn't it, Brother Jordan? Uh, you're getting ready to embark upon a huge change. And even though none of us will be there to watch you, I know and I believe and I have faith in the fact that your life away from home is still going to be the life that is pleasing unto God. Under pressures uh, Brother David, on the job as our life what it should be. With those cursing around us and those that are telling the most god awfulest things, is our life still a proof that we believe in God? Amen. When we're home alone, does our life prove that we love God? Think about that for a moment. What? Think about this. Even more importantly, because I don't expect any of us to proclaim to be perfect, although there may be one or two. I hate them. But anyway, Carson is perfect. Amen. Carson is perfect. He knows no sin. That baby knows no sin. He knows how to get angry when he ain't fed. But he knows how to keep mom up all night, so mom knows anger. Amen. But let me say this. What area of our life do we need to work on improving? Uh, I was just finished a, a book on sermon preparation, and I didn't get a lot out of the book. A couple of things, but a couple of books back, I was reading a, uh, on how the pastor, what areas of the life a, a pastor should should look at, and it made you take a look at, at every facet. Now, I, I do good in certain areas of pastor. Uh, one or two, and then there's a hundred others I fail in. But the one or two that I'm pretty good in is when you tell me something in confidence, I can take that to my grave. Amen? Right. And and I, there, there's times that some of you have said, don't you tell anybody. I've not even told my wife because that's between you, me, and God. Amen? Brother Jordan and asked me not to say anything about some things. I never said a word. Now, he, I think he's told a lot of people now. But, that's a, but you know what? There are things, church, that when, when are you re, are you a reliable person? When someone wants to confide in you, will you take that to your grave? Because I've known people that you couldn't trust. I've known pastors. When Sister Alvin and I first got married, we were struggling because of the kids. And you know, I married a woman had three kids, and we we were trying to throw everything together, and come up with a great recipe, and make it make it look good. But uh, we went to a pastor and that before the next service, the whole church knew we were struggling and having problems. I learned my lesson. Don't trust everybody. Right. Yeah. Amen. So when when somebody comes to you and they say, Brother Jordan, I'm gonna tell you something, please don't tell anybody. 
They put that confidence in you. Are you going to keep that confidence? Not, not only that, but when you're alone at home, are you watching things, looking at things, speaking things? Are you on the phone gossiping? Are you, or are you living a life that is pleasing them to God? Think about it. He won't wear sermons. What a good way to put it. Amen. Well, I don't know how he got off on that, but it was all right. But it's just a man. She's got that hair red today. Man. <laughs> red is that face. Man, I think that's a pretty face. Let's go on over there. Lesson commentary. God designed creation to worship him. Sister Howley, number three, number one. Can you, you, you already read. Sister Howley, number three. Can you read that of course? Nature worships him. have the ability to go shopping, most of us, when we want to. We, if we want something, we just, most of us, some of us can just go, buy. Amen. What, what is man that God is mindful of us? I'm, I'm going slow today because I want you to think about this. God loves us so much, David said that he could see the mercies and the love and the grace of God just by looking at the, the sky and the stars, the sun, and the moon, he could see the goodness of God toward man just by looking up and looking around. So when you look up, start from up. Start looking up, and then work your way down. You'll realize there's a roof over your head. As you start to come down, you'll see the trees give you oxygen. Amen. You'll see some of the fowls of the air that give you nourishment. You'll come down, you'll see the roof that's over your head. When you come further down, you'll see the vehicle that you have. And when you work your way even into the, the center of your life, you'll see the furniture in the house. You'll see a bed, you'll see covers, you'll see cupboards with food, you'll see a refrigerator, you'll see Sister Martha, a new refrigerator. Amen. Then when you come even closer, you'll see that you have family, you have friends, you have church family. Think about that. What is man that God gives us so much? But what? I'm going to hop on this and I'll try to hop out, hop back out. Or something that makes you feel good. But what do we give God? That's right. Come on. That's right. We look around today. There are a lot of people that are home. I know there's sickness, but there's a lot of people that are home. And when I looked at a text, or no, I'm sorry, a Facebook post for the Stephen post. Uh, it says something like 84%, 86% of the church grows because you invite people. So what are you giving to God? Does your life prove that you love God? Does your life say that you love your church and that you want others to be a part of it? Because 80 some percent of the church and those that are in the church come because you invite them. 
What is it saying about the church today? Amen. Any other comments? Yes. Young passed away, and uh, Sister Haley, I, I, he was a former member of Full Gospel former Church, Full Gospel Tabernacle, and uh, you know he didn't know he was going to die, and he literally had a stroke in the day. Church, we we uh, we can learn so much from the obituary section of the paper. <laughs> you understand that? Very true. There's thirty year old. 50 year olds, there's 100 year olds, and there's two month olds. Come on. Sure. You, you aren't promised. No. You can learn so much every day. I'm at work in the office of, at the home, and uh, I go and get through the obituaries. Even over in Indiana, in the county where I, uh, the office is based out of, I know so many people over there, I go through the obituaries, and I usually know somebody or know, knew somebody, know somebody, know somebody. It's, you aren't promised tomorrow. You're not even promised you could be here tonight for the service. So, what are we giving back to God? When we stand before Him in His presence, what is, what, what's He going to say? But he doesn't make us serve him. And he still loves us. And I think about that sometimes because I think, what more can you ask for in a God that doesn't make you bow down before him, doesn't make him uh, uh, worship you, but yet we take the opportunity most of the time we miss out <laughs> because we don't do what he has to do. I, I understand, and I'll be the first to admit that our country has a lot of problems. But it's still the best country in the world. That's right. Okay. And yet we get to live here. That's right. When you look at, uh, so you say, well, I don't want to look up. Okay, just look at the broad sense of the world. And then bring it home. Mm -hmm. We have this world that God created. And we have this country that God placed us in. He could have placed us anywhere else in the world. You could be made to wear a turban and you women could be made to put something over your face. But no, 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 no. God placed you here. That's right. Isn't that wonderful? It's beautiful. Freedom. Let's turn over there where it says God desires for us to worship Him. Sister Christy, we should read that. The song is understood. The song is understood by natural inclination. He understood that since we will worship something, 
we must set our hearts to worship God and God alone. This natural desire to worship reflects God's purpose, having been planted deep inside all of us. God's desire and purpose for all of us is to give our worship to Him. As the Almighty, He is the only one who is <coughs> of creation is worship. Do you see that the, the, the Bible, or the, the author says, he understood that since we will worship something, if we're not worshiping God, mm-hmm. we are worshiping Satan. That's right. There's, you, you're, you were created to worship something. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, you, you have to understand this. You say, well, I don't worship Satan. No, 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 you don't because you're worshiping God today. What I'm saying is if you don't know God, you're worshiping Satan. That's right. Amen. Yes, absolutely. Because that is what Satan wants us to do. Because people think, I mean, they're not, they're, because like you said, they're not worshiping Satan. They're not worshiping Satan. They're not worshiping Yeah, that's an idol God. It, absolutely. We're, oh, yeah. Because we need a lot of these things. I think so. Yeah. Because we need to worship God. I think Satan is just my opinion. I could be wrong. But I think Satan would just assume you not join in a cult church, but rather you sit at home and worship your Satan. There you go. Because uh, he, he gets more glory from that mm-hmm. than he does you going to the, the cult church where you're just trying to be different. You know, go ahead. Do you think he's, um, his thing too is stealing worship from God? Basically, I mean, he's, we know that. he's a vindictive creature, and it's like, okay, well, the fall of Satan, yeah. the fall of Lucifer mm-hmm. from heaven, proved yeah. that he wants to steal the praises of God. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, that's a very good point. Well, a lot of the kings in the Old Testament uh, got all the praise and whatever they wanted to come Well, in this week's Bible study, Wednesday night Bible study, talks about that. Yeah. Talks about the Athenians and how that they wanted, uh, they had a, they had all these gods, right? And here comes Paul. <laughs> here comes old Paul. <laughs> I just love it. There, the praise ye the Lord in His sanctuary and in the firmament of His power. Amen. Sister Alvin, would you read that for us? to learn how to praise the Lord. Sister Pam, we grew up in this. And uh, I remember from a little boy, just a little bit, I remember shouting and praying. I I grew up with it. I learned how to do it by by mimicking others. The problem with non-praisers is that no one took the time to teach them how to praise the Lord. Here's another part of my note. It is not that they do not have anything to praise the Lord for. We understand that. But they have not been taught to praise. Some, though, 
refuse to pray out of a lack of humility, and others are too stubborn to pray. That's right. I question, Sister Christie, those that are too stubborn to praise or don't have that humility, what heaven will be like for them? Will they make it to heaven? I don't know. I, I'm not judging. I'm not, I, I'm not the judge. But, Sister Haley, if we, if we can't praise the Lord here, what does that say about our walk with God here? I don't know what it says. Because... I've only grown up in an environment of I'm not ashamed to lift my hands and praise the Lord. I know that for me. I'm not afraid, uh, uh, Sister Pam, in my prayer closet to, to cry and to praise. Many times when I'm here before church and I'm praying, uh, I'll just, when I'm done, I just get up and walk around and start praising the Lord. Because that's the environment that I, I like is a church that praises the Lord. I remember going to a Methodist Church and uh, playing playing the piano for him a few times and the pastor would get up and I just thought she was a good preacher and she'd get up to preach and I amen. Nobody else was. But but I knew uh, that I'm a praiser. <coughs> and uh, I don't like to give bad news even to, to my subordinates at work. I don't like to give bad news. So I always try to praise them. You're doing a great job. Even if they're not doing a great job, I'll, I'll let them know you're doing a good job. Because we're just we're praisers, and when we're praisers in our in our uh, spiritual life, we find that we become praisers in everything. Okay, so it isn't just coming to church and praising the Lord, but I find myself praising the Lord throughout the day. Does that explain you? Okay, when. When on the job, if somebody does a good job, do you find yourself saying, hey, that was a good job? Because what I am in the spirit, I become in the flesh. That's right. Okay? So if I'm a praiser in the spirit, and I'm a praiser even when the spirit isn't moving, then I should be a praiser in the flesh. Praising those around me when they're doing things and letting people know that I love them and I appreciate them. I have workers, people who report to me that throughout the day, off, off days or when they need, need prayer or something, they will text me on my phone and they'll say, can you pray for this? Those are people that work for me. On Thanksgiving Day was the anniversary, I think the day before maybe, was the anniversary of one of my workers I hired her a year ago. She did a great job. I messaged her that day. I said, hey, happy Thanksgiving, but happy anniversary too. See how we just, we, we take that, that we, we are in the church, and, and I, I want you to think about this, because Brother Bates preached a message a couple of weeks ago that was powerful in this church. And he said, if you, if you, if you want to play the drums or the, the guitar, find a corner and do it. If you have an office or a job to do, find a corner and do it in the church. It was powerful. Beautiful. And I've, I've not forgotten that. Because I was a natural born leader. Now I was shy when I was a boy. But I came out of that pretty quick. Amen. Amen. And uh, at school, I wasn't a cursor. I didn't fit in. But yet everybody liked me. And I liked everybody. And and when, when, uh, when I went to college, uh, I was a good public speaker. Matter of fact, the, the, the professor told me his name was Dr. Charles. He said, you're the best public speaker I've ever had. And it's just because I, I enjoyed it. I'm not, not bashful. And I, uh, he always gave me a subject that I wanted to speak about. And if it wasn't something I wanted to speak about, I turned it to something I wanted to speak about, but still on the same subject matter. And it, it, it was that I was a natural born leader. I understand that. So that is in my job. I'm a leader on my job. In the church, I'm a leader in the church. In my home life, I'm a leader in my home. But maybe you're not a natural born leader. Maybe you're a natural born follower. And maybe that's what you're supposed to do. Maybe you're a natural born praiser. And that's what you're supposed to do. Maybe you're not a natural born praiser. But you need to learn how to praise anyway. You understand what I'm saying? Yep. 
I, I wish I was born to be a very methodical and detailed person down to every little detail. But I'd rather just skim the high line and move on. But some of you are very de detail-oriented people. Think about that. God created us all different, but He created us for a purpose. Amen. Man, I just went right on that, didn't we? Yes, He does. Whatever we do, we need to do it for God. Amen. You say, well, my job is to know that I'm a Christian. Or uh, why not? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I, I'm at work a lot now. I work in the middle school. And there was several of them when I came to the office that used to curse me and everything. Well, now that they've got to know me, when one of them starts to say a cuss word, so they say, oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm done. Mm -hmm. They see the example that I'm setting, and it's changing in some of them, and, and I'm glad for that. Because I want my life to be a witness. Mm -hmm. I don't want to carouse and go on and keep on doing the same old things that when I'm gone, you know, I, one thing that I like about my granddad, my granddad lived what he preached about. Yes. I'm going to be able to have my life the way I am to, to be an example when I'm gone that they'll say, I know he can pray. Amen. It, it isn't that Brother David on the job, we have to tell him to shut up, don't use that language no. around me. Amen. But just to we live a life in front of them where we don't curse and we, we don't do things that, that the world does, right? They recognize there's a difference there and then they begin to respect that difference. Then they begin, you got to be careful because then they start to really watch you and look for you to make a mistake. Amen. All right. Yeah, uh, yes, it's okay. uh, I'm kind of the um, what brother um, Stephen yes brother <laughs> Stephen said I can relate to that because whenever I like we spent Thanksgiving um, down in Sophia and uh, we stayed over a couple nights and uh, my nephew said Annie know how much I hold my tongue. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so, and then I still start thinking, how much are they really watching me? And I mess up a lot. <laughs> we all do. So, um, you know, so it makes you think about, you know, is your life what it should be? Are you doing, you know, anything to do that might even bring them in? Yes. Amen. And I noticed that uh, Nathan, Nathan sent us a friend request oh, on really? Facebook. Yes. And uh, I thought how wonderful that that is because, you know, we've only met him a couple times, but he must have done something he liked because he liked us. It isn't, it isn't about, um, like Sister Pam said, she, she never had to tell those boys to shut up. They just respect God enough. They respect your walk enough. They don't want to offend you. They love you enough, don't they? That's beautiful. Yeah, and you know, Nathan, <coughs> I don't even know if I've even told y'all, but he goes to church with his daughter every Sunday. Oh, that's beautiful. And I have not seen him uh, a couple weeks ago post a scripture. Oh, wow. Uh, and I was like, is this Nathan? I mean, he's <laughs> the, like,
if you want one, you start studying it here, which I recommend, because we never get through the whole thing. <laughs> Stephen, would you tell the class that we're going to find it? Dude, we never get through the whole, the whole lesson. So, uh, if you want another book, they're up there. And uh, I need to take one to the tailors because we were about halfway through this one before we got the last one to me. But uh, I tell you what, it is just beautiful what God can do when we want Him to live through us. And that's exactly what we should want to do, is God to live through us. Right. Amen. And I just appreciate the Lord. Amen. And all that he is doing in this church. I look around and I'm just thrilled to death and excited. And uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing. This morning, uh, as the class comes, let us, let us pray and ask the Lord for mercy. God, we thank you today for all that you've done in this church and with this people. We thank you, Lord God, for your many blessings in this time of Thanksgiving and Christmas. I pray, Lord, that you help us to reach out, to live a life that is pleasing unto you. Lord, to live a life that you find pleasing, and God, that is a life that others look at, and Lord, that they want to mimic, and God, that they look at and they can see you through us. Lord, as we hold our tongue, and uh, Lord, we don't throw out the words that the world does, and we don't do the things that the world does, I pray, God, that they see that. Lord, that they, they come to us and they want to be a part. Help us to reach out, Lord, and invite and seek and save those that are lost. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I know we had a birthday for the Freddy, but he's not here. Amen. And so... Good. Like they got him done. That's all that matters. He got done. Amen. Sister Christy, would you come to the piano? Do a little uh, Jesus love little children. <laughs> Get the penny marks going. Right. I did like it. You heard me. They bring you up. Amen. Yeah. Uh, I'll bring you up. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. And I for you a Thank you for the fellowship of thy people, thy saints, O Lord. 
Could I go and say, Jesus, we pray that we walk in thy will, talk in thy will, work in thy will, Lord, follow thy way always. In the glorious holy name, Jesus, bless us and keep us and bring us back again the next appointed hour. And we praise you and glorify you in your holy name, Jesus. Amen.